Oh, I'm so ready. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we are live. Welcome to episode 135 Woo! of the Beastly Thoughts video game podcast. Fucking hell, we're old. Greetings and salutations. I'm, I'm, I'm young. I'm a spring chicken over here. Yeah, I'm, I'm more I'm like a turkey. I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> 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 that is not true, but... Go ahead, yeah. Yo, okay. we got a lot to talk about. I mean, like, a lot to talk about in December. No kidding, <laughs> That's man. insane. Who thought? Yeah. No Totally kidding. insane. Let me just start by saying this. Welcome to the show. I'm so happy to see you guys. I've been thinking about this show heavily for the last 48 hours. Uh-huh. It's really been insane. Uh, I didn't even think about PlayStation Experience. PSX completely, uh, you know, was out of my mind until my wife said, hey, hon, PSX is getting ready to start. You want to watch it? I was like, oh, it's today? Yeah. It was one of the, one of those situations. Completely, too. completely blew me out of the water. Of course, we had the Game Awards happen this week. It was week. like an E3 presentation. It was. It awesome. really was. Well, like, see, the it, thing was. So many so many like games got announced. So many trailers got shown for the first time. Like, it was really good. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> At both, like the Game Awards showed Hideo Kojima's new game, Death Stranding. It showed Guillermo del Toro's actually in the game. More yeah, of a right? fuck you to Konami, <laughs> right? Uh, it, they showed new reveals at the Game Awards. And to me, I was like, wow, this is really a nice Christmas gift. The end of the year, putting a nice bow on some exciting new yeah. games coming out. And to me, the biggest surprises came from PSX, which I wasn't expecting. To be mm-hmm. totally honest, last year I was let down by PSX. It was oh, probably yeah, the, it was the, it was the show of the year that I was least excited about. When it was over, I was like, why? What was the point of even, even doing that? There was nothing really exciting. And so with that in mind, this PSX, I didn't know what to expect, but Sony came in, they blew the fucking roof off of the place with the very first reveal. No kidding. And then they just proceeded to continue to crank out hit after hit after hit until the very end. So they started on an insane note, and they ended on an incredible and unbelievable note. Yeah. It's just been a hell of a week. Welcome to Beastly Thoughts. Right. Let's get into it. Let's get into <laughs> it. I, I want to do what you've been playing, but I want to make it quick because let's do it quick. Okay. Like we got yes. we got a lot of stuff I want to talk a about. I want to talk. I want to talk about the stuff we saw on PSX, and I want to talk about the. The Game Awards, Jeff Keighley's Game Awards uh, well. that aired, because I thought that was pretty interesting, uh, some of the picks that they picked. Robbie, do you have like the uh, full list of the games that winners? won? Winners? Uh, I should bring up the nominees, actually. Let me go yeah, find bring, those. Uh, okay. well, just the winners is fine. Yeah, the nominees would probably be helpful, too. Yeah, I'll go. All right, so, uh, while, he's so do- while, he's, while he's doing that, let's talk about what we've been playing. Right. Real quick. Run through the gamut. You guys knew last week I was playing Dishonored 2. I like it more this week than I did last week. The game has some incredible mechanics I've never seen in any game before that last week I hadn't unlocked. There's this one thing that you can do in the game that really blew my mind, and it's only there for a certain period of time throughout the game, and it's not there for the rest of the game. It's the ability to hold up basically this little piece of glass, and you look through it, and you can look through time. So you're in this old dilapidated... Uh, location and everything is just destroyed but when you hold up the glass you can see in the past when it was prestigious when there are people walking around when there were enemies there and you can basically look and see where you need to go go right to that period of time where everything is beautiful again kill those enemies grab what you need go back to the dilapidated version and basically you can walk around there's enemies coming towards you you're looking through the glass they walk through you, you turn around and look at them, you have their back, then you go to the time where they're in and you stealthily kill them and then you jump back and forth through time. Incredible game. Uh, I'm re- really feeling more and more like a badass now. Another game I've been playing, I started playing this today before yesterday, Titanfall 2. Uh, I put probably two hours into this game. Of course, I didn't get much time in the original Titanfall game because by the time I started playing it, everybody was already gone. Yeah, and there uh, was no but, single player, so. Yeah. Titanfall 2, I love the single player. I love how they're bringing basically this whole idea of this autonomous uh, artificial intelligence in the form of this Titan, whose job is to bond with you, learn who you are, protect you, and vice versa. The game plays extremely well. I told you during the pre-show. As far as the gunplay, the way that you feel uh, maneuvering in the world, as far as your character, uh, the the actual weapons themselves, it's one of the best feeling first-person shooters I've played. It just feels... It's almost like an extension of, you know, your hands. It, it, it just moves it so tight. well. Yeah, like, I mean. It feels really tight. 
all the wall running and the double jump, all it just makes a lot of sense and it feels really, really good. I haven't gotten too deep into uh, the single player campaign yet. I'm I looking forward to, get- to once you get into the single player campaign. I'm looking forward to what you think about what they did with some of the missions because, like, not only do you get like the great gameplay that is the base, like, you know, mechanics of Titanfall. But they really play around with the, you know, the mission objectives and the structures of the levels and what you actually. I think have to I do. may have seen some of that stuff. Yeah. Where you go in as a Titan, you get to a certain point, you can't progress any further. You got to leave the Titan. The Titan, of course, is autonomous. He'll say, "Okay, we need to separate. I'm going to go this way. You go do what you need to do." And he's tracking you, telling you what you need to do. You have to open doors and do all kinds of stuff to get him to where you are. It's really fun, and that might not be what you're talking about. But so far, yeah. what I've played, it's really, really been fun, and yeah, I look forward they, to the next week. They week's. play with the game mechanics a lot in the single player campaign. Like, it, it's pretty impressive, and it, it really diversifies like what you actually are doing in that game in a huge way. And just and, and just to be known, I'm doing what I always say I'm not going to do. I'm really trying hard to beat you know uh, Dishonored Two, but at the same time, I got uh, Skyrim remastered. I haven't even tried it yet, haven't played it yet, haven't even loaded it up yet. And I know that's going to kill a lot of my time. I'm supposed to be getting back into The Witcher 3 with you. Mm-hmm. And since last week, I haven't even had a chance to do it because all this it, huh? new stuff. It's just, Ooh. it's just so tough. It's so many games to play. I mean, it's like it was 20 years ago. One or two really good games every three or four months. Now they release 10 games the same day. They're all triple triple leg titles or exclusives that you really want to play. And mm-hmm. it makes it extra, extra hard for you to get your hands on all of them and play them and give them their due diligence. But 2016 this is a, was a stunning year for video games. Yeah. So much Very good, good stuff came out. It's like, been really, insane. really good stuff. It has. Um, Robbie, what have you been playing? I uh, haven't been playing much this week, but I have been playing a couple things I got from the Black Friday sales, and I've been playing Dark Souls 3 a lot, because I got that for $25, which I was very happy about. Yeah, been playing that with deal. friends, and I love that game. Like, it's tough as shit, but it's a lot of yeah. fun, man. I mean, you know, just learning how to kill bosses, learning how to get through sections, like, oh, I have to do this a certain way. You know, the game doesn't teach you anything. You have to learn everything, and that's what mm-hmm. I love about it. It's Or you can look up fun. a YouTube video. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Once you fight a boss like eight, ten times, you're like, all right, maybe I want to see how this is done and all yeah. that. But uh, Dark Souls is just really fun. And then the other thing I've been playing is uh, Assassin's Creed Syndicate. I got this week and I tried that out. And honestly, I would say it's okay. I that's wasn't last super year's Assassin's Creed. Yeah, it's the latest Assassin's Creed that come out. That's come out. Obviously, there is no game this year. There will be one yeah. next year, but. So far, I think it's okay. Like, you know what I mean? It just feels like an Assassin's Creed game at this point. It just feels like the same ground we've covered for years now. Yeah, so. those have gotten really stale. Yeah, it's mm. fine, but nothing amazing. So, it's okay, but... Yeah, that's about it for me, though. Um, I've been playing... I finally finished... Uh, last... Uh, or not Last of Us. <laughs> I finally finished uh, Uncharted 4. Sure, back that, uh, I, after watching the trailer for the next Uncharted game... Uh, I went immediately to my PlayStation and I finished it. I only had like three chapters left uh, mm-hmm. and I finished that up. I was really disappointed by the ending. I don't want to talk about the ending. I feel like it's you know, probably still too early to talk about spoilers, yeah. but I got to tell you, I was really disappointed by the ending. Really? Um, yeah, I've been, I've been playing Doom, still trucking away at Doom. I absolutely adore that game. Um, playing it on the PC, it runs buttery smooth. It's so fun to like kind of get back into uh, you know, the mouse and keyboard you know, style of play. Uh, I've really been having fun with that, but the Witcher is the game right now uh, that is really holding my attention. Uh, I went like a week without playing it uh, and got back into it this week. And you know, what's, what's incredible, right? Is that there are no, there's a ton of side quests, but there are no side quests that feel just like I'm only doing this to get experience. Almost all of them are interesting and, you know, fun in their own way. And the world is so fully realized. I, so here's a story. Is I, I, I'm hanging around in this new city. I think it's called Novograd. I can't remember the name of the city. And uh, I come across a barber shop. I'm like, oh, okay. Time to get the, uh, get the hair trimmed up, right? Time for a new hairstyle. So I previously was rocking like kind of this mohawk with a ponytail. I was getting a little sick of it. I decided I wanted to do uh, something a little short, but, you know, still stylish. I... Uh, Go into the barber shop. Barber seems a little on the drunk side, but I'm like, you know what? Who the fuck cares? I'm sure there's some kind of story that this is gonna, ha- you know, something's gonna happen here. You'll just get but, better. You know, service we're gonna play way. this out. 
So I picked the I picked the hairstyle I want for my Witcher for Garrett for Geralt, whatever his name is. <laughs> Geralt. <laughs> Garrett. And, uh, and uh, you know it, it does like the little fade to black and fades back in, and I've got this like emo haircut with like <laughs> hair hanging into my eyes. And Geralt immediately says to Barbara, this is not the haircut I asked for. <laughs> <laughs> and the barber gives no shits. <laughs> He's like, fuck you. You get what life gives you. That's how life is. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> like you can't even be mad lesson. because like, like in game, you're like, wait a minute. I just paid for this haircut. You're giving me my money back. I'm the fucking witcher, son. You don't fuck with me. <laughs> but outside of the game, like as a player, you're just like, this is fucking hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> so I've been rocking this emo haircut for the last couple of days. And every time I look at my character, I chuckle because of this drunk barber who gave me the haircut. Yeah. Um, I've also been doing uh, the Perma Destiny Challenge. Oh, go ahead. No, I was listening. I've also I'm been done, doing listening. the uh, Perma Destiny Challenge or Destiny Challenge in uh, Destiny. That's been a lot of fun. Basically, you uh, you start a brand new character on a brand new account, and uh, you play until you die. Uh, the goal is to get as many exotics as you can. There's a lot of streamers trying this, uh, and it's a lot of fun because you uh, you know every mission you go into is like a high stress environment. Because <laughs> if you die, you have to delete your character. Ooh, <laughs> so it's death been a lot destiny. of fun. Yeah. So wow. It, you know, it's almost like playing like a roguelike or something where, you know, you collect everything you can, but if you die, you lose it's it all. all it's yeah. all over. God, that's that it. that's been really fun. Like I've really been enjoying it. So that's what Ooh. I've been playing. Uh, more old games. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta well, catch I up. I want to talk about man. some new games. Absolutely. So, uh, do you want to do the uh, video game awards, or do you want to do the uh, PSX first? Well, the video game awards happen first. I do have a list, but this list is pretty much everything. I can go through the nomin not the nominations, but the categories, and we can yeah. talk about whichever ones you guys want to uh, talk about. I'll save the best the game of the year for the end. But best VR game was Res Infinite. Okay. On uh, PlayStation VR. And the runners up were Batman Arkham VR, E Valkyrie, Job Simulator, and Thumper, which Thumper is amazing. Thumper is uh, amazing, but is it. It basically doesn't matter if it's on VR or on a television screen. I felt, you know, it was just so different, you know, playing it in VR. Yeah. It really, really was incredible. The gameplay and, doesn't change. Maybe your experience with the game changes a little bit. I would have given it to E Valkyrie because that, that game. Feels like it immerses you in a world, but Res Infinite is a good pick too. Speaking off the cuff, have you tried the new Resident Evil VR demo, Brian? No, I haven't. It just got released yesterday, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, I'll try that. Oh, I'll do it live on man. stream so that everybody can make oh, fun of me peeing my pants on on yeah. live TV. <laughs> That'll be the best. <laughs> All right, so uh, let me go back to the top of the list. Best studio for game direction. The winner was Blizzard for Overwatch. Well deserved, uh, the, I think. Of course, so. which which is deserved. Uh, the runners up were Dice for Battlefield One, ID Software for Doom, Naughty Dog for Uncharted Four, and Respawn for Titanfall Two. Oh, so that was six, this though. almost right. We're going to talk about Game of the Year. Can we just give it away? I mean, everybody knows that Overwatch won Game of the Year. Oh, so Overwatch won Game of the Year. So this one almost feels like it goes hand in hand. Like best developer is going to make the best game, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. so, what the fuck? <laughs> Like, That's why true. Is they seem like the awards? same award. Unless yeah. you have, I could see giving it to somebody else. Like if you, maybe the team that made two of the best games, they weren't like they didn't. Neither one of them won the best game of the year, but two of the best games this year. Then you, uh -huh. you, know, you bump them up. But come on, I mean, you, the best developer ought to win best game too, right? Like they kind of go hand in hand. That's a weird one. Yeah, That's what you would think. But another one, which of course Overwatch wouldn't be in, best narrative. The winner yeah. was. Uncharted 4 at Thief's End, which is Naughty Dog. And the yeah. runners-up were Firewatch, is a game you guys have that I never tried. Inside, which I've heard a lot from Robbie about. Mafia 3 and Oxenfree. Yeah. So those are all very narrative-driven experiences. And crazy enough, the only one I've ever tried was Uncharted 4, so I feel like a loser on that yeah. front. I mm -hmm. think the thing about uh, Inside specifically, I'm going to say, is that it tells a narrative, and it's really compelling without ever saying a word like there's not a single line of dialogue spoken through that entire game and it does what it does so well that's well, really captivating to me 
you you mentioned this game to me months ago. I still haven't tried it. I've seen you know it's only like two, short, two so hours, good. two and a half hours. I think really? it's four hours actually closer it, to. Is it, yeah, is it a console game. game or is it a Steam type? No, of it's game? on everything. So, it's on everything. Really? Yeah. I, I'm going to have to try it because it inside also won best art direction. Wonderful so, game, guys. You really do need to try it. Yeah. I and if totally the runners up in our direction were Abzu, Firewatch, Overwatch. There's a lot of watches in there, and Uncharted Four. <laughs> a lot uh, of watches. Yeah. 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 Um, something that I really like. A lot of people don't because I'm an audiophile. When it comes to game soundtracks, the best music and sound design winner was Doom. That and deserved I've, it, man. I love that soundtrack. As someone who loves heavy metal, that is sick. I love that soundtrack. It fits too. So the much. guns it, sound it great does. too. Yeah. Like the guns sound great. The monsters sound great. Being in that room, you know, I remember playing Doom when I was a kid, right, the, for the first time. And I remember, like, hearing those monsters around me and, like, being scared, right? And yeah. it was amazing how I go into Doom, you know, 2016, and I have the same feeling after all these years. Like, yeah, how can they, they do it? Like, it's amazing. I'm that's surprised, the thing. frankly, they didn't win Developer of the Year because... For them to bring out a modern version of Doom that so faithfully recreates Doom, but also is so fresh and so fun and so 2016, I think is a miracle. Like it, they pulled off a fucking miracle. If you ask this me, this doesn't happen. If the multiplayer really was game. better, I think they would have won it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can totally agree with you there. I think the multiplayer is fun enough. I don't know if it's fun enough for a hardcore fan to stay with it for a year straight. The campaign certainly is amazing yeah but that's yeah. the thing about doom that blew my mind was i you know as a teenager i played the original doom doom 2 and that entire thing that whole nostalgia effect really came back tenfold with the doom remake yeah. or doom you know the re the reboot all the music all that stuff felt so faithful to the original game and yeah the music i'm not a look at me do i look like a heavy metal fan i fucking love the music in that game though it really was it, it was well deserved it fits yeah, it fits yeah sure. it's really good best performance uh went to nolan north as nathan drake in uncharted 4 uh the runner-ups the runners up were alex hernandez as lincoln in mafia 3 sissy jones as delilah and firewatch emily rose as elena in uncharted 4 rich summers as henry and firewatch i've really got to try firewatch and troy baker as sam drake and uncharted for these and i think this is it, it was a give me i mean to me nathan was such a likable character and the yeah, way that they were too obvious man i mean they're all awesome all what these was cool, I, so i just but, finished playing yeah. through that game and what was cool about it was that he had real conflict in that game right as he was you know he goes off on an adventure with his brother without telling his wife. His wife. You know, and then his wife kind of catches him. And there's real struggle for Nathan in that game where, you know, he's got to decide, like, you know, What's what important? do I want my future to look like? Do I want to be married? Do I want to have kids? Like, is that my future? Or do I want to continue being this kind of, like, rogue adventurer with my brother? And it was, Love he that. pulled it off. He pulled it off perfectly. Like it felt believable all the way up till the very fucking bitter end. Yeah, oh, man. <laughs> I didn't like the that, end of that game. Oh man, it, I I'm loved sure, it. If you liked I'm... it, I'm sure it just made you sad, Briar. I mean, <laughs> seeing seeing that end. Oh man, and, and there's more Uncharted news later on in the show. Yeah. Another award that I didn't even see coming, but really made my eyes water. And I'm not joking. I really felt an emotional connection uh, watching the recipient of this award was the Games for Impact Award. Yeah. Oh, yes. The Games for Impact Award, uh, this highlights developers who create games that, <clears throat> that, that really go with struggles that people have in everyday life, people with disabilities, people with issues, people with cancer. And uh, it shines a light on these issues in a way that allows people to interact with them positively through gaming. And the winner of uh, the Impact Award was a game called That Dragon, Cancer, uh, from Numinous Games. And the recipient took the stage and talked about this award and how this whole game was an idea that he and his wife came up with that went along with his son battling cancer and how it really affected him and his family and his son. And the people playing this game, Dragon, uh, it's called, I'm sorry, That's Dragon called, Cancer. That Dragon Cancer got yep. to know his son through playing this game. And I, I was looking at it. I was like, at first I didn't know what was going on, but immediately upon 
watching him take that award and watching him tear up and watching the emotional resonance between him and, and, he was and so everyone watching. Man. I almost cried. I was like, damn. I, I wanted yeah. to play that game. And it's probably going to be something that I play. And the other games that were uh, nominees were uh, Black Hood, Orwell, and Sea Hero. Never so, heard of any of those. <laughs> and I'm sorry, 1979 Revolution. But all these games, I believe, just based on this category, need to be played because more than likely they tell a tale that most developers don't know about and many don't care about. So that that was really uh, a special category. Best indie game uh, should be, be on PlayStation Vita. The winner is Inside, <laughs> right? Inside, again, they were taking a lot of awards and obviously it's a fantastic game. Uh, the runners-up were Firewatch, Hyperlight Drifter, Starred Valley, and The Witness. So, People yeah. People love Stardew Valley. I was actually surprised that yeah, didn't I was win surprised them. Stardew that was Valley. crazy. I felt like that was a shoe-in. Mm. Okay, so here we go with something that my kids know about, and probably yours too, Briar. Oh, and Robbie. The best mobile handheld game. <sighs> the win- Just whatever. The winner, <laughs> Pokemon Go by Niantic. Is anybody surprised by that? Does anybody care about this? I'm a little annoyed. That <laughs> like Pokemon Go wasn't a bad game, but I feel like it wasn't. Uh, deserving. It was kind of bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it was kind of broken for a long fun. fucking time. Well, yeah, it, 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 it was broken it so been. long that that's what that's why the decline in in players has you know hit the precipice it yeah. is now because there was so many issues and people were investing money and trying so hard to find out where these Pokemon were. And at the same time, Niantic was putting in stipulations that actually stopped that progression. And people said, Hey, you know what? I'm done with this game. But another game in this category that I didn't even know about. Well, I guess it, I do know about it, but Monster Hunter Generations is on there as well. Monster Hunter is a, a fantastic game. Fire Emblem Fates, of course on 3DS and yep. Severed. Severed was a very popular game on uh, just as far as handhelds go, and it's on the PlayStation Vita. All right, best action game, Doom. Yeah, of course. I think a no brainer. Yeah, Doom, that was Doom easy. is it's just so much action. The runners up in this category were Battlefield One, Gears of War Four, Overwatch, and Titanfall Two. So those are all great games, uh, and I I played them all except for you Gears. You really call and Overwatch an action game? I would think that I, that would just sit in, in the multiplayer. What constitutes action, though? I, I don't I, know. I, I guess I... I mean, they, it's they multiplayer do. only, it, it only gets to be in the multiplayer. <laughs> you know? like. <laughs> but I guess, you know, it is, you're shooting, so I guess it's action. Yeah. Well, the best action adventure game, the winner is Dishonored 2. So, that is to me, I, I didn't even see this part of the actual conference or the awards, but I totally 100% agree with that. It's yeah, really better a great, than Uncharted 4. Um, it's on the list, it's a great damn game, Briar. I, I mean, I, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend it's not. I mean, it's something I want to play. I was playing it right before I came back here to do the show, mm-hmm. uh, and, and I got so many games to play, and I got newer games, games I just picked up. And the fact re- remains that while my wife is playing Titanfall 2, I'm still walking around in this honor trying to find every little thing I can because it's enjoyable. Yeah. It's really fun to sneak up on people and use these crazy abilities on them and just, you know, slice people's heads off or impale you through your eye because I'm a badass. It just It's a really fun game. The runners up in this category were Hitman, uh, Hitman, Hyper Light Drifter, Ratchet and & Clank, and Uncharted 4 at these end. So it's a well-deserved uh uh, an award. The best role playing game, the winner, is The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt DLC Blood and Wine, which I have, which I haven't played. I wanted to ask you that, Brian. You're playing The Witcher 3 now on PC. Mm-hmm. Do you have all the DLC as well? Yeah, it came with all the DLC. I haven't gotten that far, but is it, mm. isn't it kind of weird that a DLC pack when? wins? That is weird, especially for Dark Souls 3, man. That's what I wanted to win for RPG. That's the only category we This isn't for. best role playing RPG. Uh, DLC of the DLC, year. It's just no, the it's best role just game game. of the year, which is yeah. kind of but, bullshit but, if you ask me. But yeah, Blood and Wine is supposed to be an extremely expansive DLC. It's yeah, it's, it's not a game, like the same it's, size as the full game. It's a it's a really big game, and uh, so people voted for this. Yeah, so you really that's the thing ever, about this, right? Is that it's not like a team of experts that have been. Have you know come to the conclusion? This was voted on by the public, and I think it kind of shows. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
The runners-up were Dark Souls 3 for Robbie, Deus Ex, Mankind Divided, World of Warcraft, Legion. Oh, wow. Expansion. And, well, that's kind of different. Well, it was kind of like expansions are their own games almost for that game. It's been just going so long. And Xenoblade Chronicles X. Way to go, Xenoblade. So, I mean, I guess it's all subjective, but the one thing we need to know is these are all games that people need to be playing. The best fighting game. Anybody surprised? Yeah. Street Fighter V. I'm actually I'm a surprised. little surprised. A game no. launched completely fucking... <laughs> I guess <laughs> lack of matter. competition? I don't know. Yeah. Well, let me just say this, because I got Street Fighter V when it first came out. Yeah. Street Fighter V, when it launched, it was missing content, but the core gameplay was perfect. Okay. The stuff... The stuff that made Street Fighter amazing hasn't changed. Okay. The fact that it was missing, you know, arcade the, mode yeah. or practice modes, those were tangible it was issues. The game. It was missing portions of the game that it people was missing ex- a actual expected. game in there. Yeah. Yeah. But the but the portion of the game That's that real. the hardcore wanted was there and it yeah. worked flawlessly. Like you could jump online and battle your friends in Street Fighter. Yeah. It was a lot harder back then. The runners up were uh Killer Instinct Season 3, King of Fighters, what is that, 15, and Pokken Tournament, which is the Nintendo Wii U Tekken slash Pokemon game, which I actually was considering buying. Hmm. Now, oh, Briar, this is, this is for myself and you, my friend. The best family game? <laughs> no, it's not. The winner's Pokemon Go. Holy shit. What? Really? It won that too? I didn't know yeah. that. Oh my god! Yeah, I'm going. To, I got to get rid of my family. Dragon oh, Quest Builders was uh, was a runner up. Lego Star Wars: The Force Awakens, Ratchet and Clank, and Skylanders: Imaginators. Oh, Ratchet and Clank should. It, why does this make it sound really lame to be a family? Okay, best strategy game was Civilization VI. Things are lame. It, 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 uh, it's like yeah, you meet someone, say, "Oh, you're a family," and you want to say, "No, I don't yeah, know." They got their moments. Hey, yeah, they can, they can shine. <laughs> In times of need, but Civilization Six won Best Strategy Game. Runners up were Fire Emblem Fates, The Banner Saga Two, which is a game I own uh, that's very very difficult for me to play. Total War, Warhammer, and XCOM Two, and we're almost well, we're almost to the bottom of the list. Uh, best sports slash racing game. Did you guys see this actual category? It was really really weird to me. That was weird because it's all sports games, and then the Wait, one racing did you game. Say sports one strategy game. Civilization Six. Okay. Yeah. I would have given it was either XCOM. that or XCOM. That was obvious to me. Yeah. That was obvious. All right, but but the best sports racing game winner was Forza Horizon Three. Mm-hmm. The runners up. Now tell me how these fit together in your mind. The runners up are FIFA Seventeen, MLB The yeah. Show, yeah. NBA Two K Seventeen, and Pro Evolution Soccer. But Forza Horizon Three won the category. It's really really weird. That's bizarre to me too. Yeah. Where did put the driving games in the sports games in the same category? But only one driving game was there, and it beat the shit out of all the sports games. Yeah, I think it should have won though, because I don't good. care about the rest of them. I don't know. How do you judge <laughs> a soccer game versus a baseball game, like versus a driving game? I, I don't know. It's a weird. It's category. weird. Best multiplayer Destiny game. Destiny SRL. <laughs> The best multiplayer game winner is Overwatch by Blizzard. The runners-up were Battlefield 1, Gears of War 4, Overcooked, Titanfall 2, and Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. Wow, that was on there. Hmm. Surprising. Overwatch yeah. is an amazing game. I was telling my, my wife this before we did the show. It's amazing that people end up wanting the thing that they claim that they don't. For a long time, I was one of the people as well who was adamantly against online-only games that don't have campaigns, and you have to be online to play them. I'm sure you guys. Heard I was asking argument. Call of Duty for, to do it for the last five years. <laughs> Why well, are you, you still making summer. a single player campaign? Nobody likes this shit. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's obvious that there was a winning formula, formula with Blizzard because Overwatch won numerous awards, and that's all yeah. they had to offer. They the do really East smart East things player. with that game, though, with like the the weekly stuff and like the playlists and the. And the ranked play, like they do, really start smart stuff with that. And the characters are all very good and interesting. The level design is very good. It's a bright, cheerful game. I, I like that yeah, game it a is. lot. It makes you feel good to to shoot people in the ass in that game. For some reason, that's really great. The next few categories we're going to skip because I'm sure no one who watches our show cares about the best esports player. We don't know his name. Don't care to know. Yeah, best esports team. The best esports team. The best esports game. The trending gamer 
was Boogie 2988. Love that guy. Yes, very happy about that. He, he deserved that, uh, and and he's a very humble YouTuber, very popular Twitch streamer, yeah. just a, a overall really good guy. It took me a long time to come around to Boogie, because mm-hmm. initially I was like, I'm a big guy too. I want the same, but let me just slow down and maybe grow on my own. But Boogie won. He was going against Angry Joe, who will probably get it next year, Danny O'Dwyer, uh, Jap Septic Eye, and what is it, Lyric? Lyric, Lyric, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't follow these guys. I'm too old for that shit. The most anticipated game. The winner was The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Mm. The runners-up were God of War, Horizon Zero Dawn, Mass Effect Andromeda, and Red Dead Redemption 2. I agree That's with all those except... List, though. Oh. Man, this is a, a very... I'm, so, I'm really, really surprised The Legend of Zelda beat out God of War. I'm surprised that they beat I'm out Red Dead that. Redemption 2. Say what? The only thing I could see beating it at Legend of Zelda out was Andromeda. Uh, Everything no, on that, that. else on that list. No way. Zelda. God of War Zelda. looked like it was going to be it? Yeah, Zelda is Zelda, but Red Dead Redemption 2? Hmm. It's exciting. Uh, I, it, I mean, Red Dead Redemption. I, I think, I, oh, I'm so excited for that. I, I, think, I think that they, they, they own that. I think they own that. Uh, now, let's talk about the actual winner and were you guys actually surprised? Game of the Year. The winner was Blizzard's Overwatch. The runners up were Doom, which I was really proud to see them there. Ooh. Inside, which is another game I never played, but I hear great things about. Titanfall 2, which I'm getting into now, and I love. And Uncharted 4 was the game that I said was going to win. No issue here, because I know Overwatch is amazing as well. But I was really shocked. Were you guys surprised to see Overwatch take it from Uncharted? No. Or, or Briar, I was. Yeah. The week before last, Briar, you said that you thought Doom was going to win it, and I didn't know they would even be there. But they I, were. I, I could give it to. I wouldn't. I definitely wouldn't give it to Uncharted. In that against that competition, uh, in my opinion, there is no perfect game in there. Like there is no mm-hmm. like you know truly perfect game in there. But Overwatch is pretty good. You know, like I, I could see why it got voted in. I don't know if it would have been my pick, but I could see why it got voted in. Yep. Yeah, I, I was surprised, uh, but I was pleasantly surprised. Overwatch is a great game, uh, and it's one that I probably I've spent more time playing Overwatch at this point than I had playing Uncharted Four. So I felt like, um, you know, it wasn't a missed opportunity or something that they didn't deserve, and I was just happy to see it all. And I thought at the end of P, I mean, at the end of uh, the Game Awards, uh, that that was going to be our last little hurrah for for the year. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. PSX 2016 hit, and like a tsunami, it destroyed everybody in its wake. By the end of it, I felt like a person who had just lost his mind. I didn't know that any of this stuff was going to was going to be announced. Now it's here, and we got to talk about this stuff. And let me just say this: from time to time, I make predictions, guys, and some of them are really off the wall. But there are those few predictions that I do make that come true. And one of the predictions that my co-host said wasn't going to happen actually happened this year at PSX 2016. Uh, Two or three weeks ago, uh, we were talking about PSX, and I mentioned that I think that they're going to reveal The Last of Us 2. And both of my very (laughs) handsome co-host said i was fucking out of my You're like there's no way it's gonna happen you're full of shit easily i used to have a friend that thought he was psychic because he would always say remember i just said that was gonna happen remember how i just like we'd be watching a baseball game and he'd say i think this guy's gonna hit a home run and he hit a home run and he's like look at that i'm fucking psychic (laughs) the thing is is he said watch this this guy's gonna hit a home run for every fucking batter (laughs) so yeah on occasion (laughs) Sun shined on his ass. <laughs> Jeez. But you got to so, look at the total picture here. <laughs> the broken clock is twi- uh, uh, right twice a day. All right. That's where we got here. But we hey, got some- before we move on, I, I something just hit me that I can't believe happened, Beastly, is you didn't say you were playing Final Fantasy 15. I didn't get it yet. How the fuck is that happening? You're like the biggest what? Final Fantasy fan I know. Yeah. And that I, game's I'm getting really, good I'm reviews. Really, I'm really excited about it. My son was very upset that I didn't buy it, but it's only so much time. And 
I've gotten past the point of that childhood thing where you can just cut something off that you're really enjoying to j- enjoy something else. I know Final Fantasy 15 is a great game. Everybody who I've heard from yeah. really, really enjoys it, family and friends. I thought right you'd now, be in a tent, like, lined up. N- no. Waiting outside. <laughs> not, not quite. <laughs> I, actually, before I get Final Fantasy, I've already lined this up. I know Final Fantasy is going to take 50 hours away from me. Right now, I've got all these games lined up. The only game that I'm considering putting everything aside for right now is The Last Guardian. And that's on the 7th. Really? Mm. You're more excited for The Last Guardian than you are for Final Fantasy. That's tomorrow yeah. night, actually. Yeah, 9 o'clock, it's going to be on. Wow. Uh, and and wow. That, might come, that might come as a surprise, right? This is the, Hear me out. Final Fantasy 13, I never liked. You know what you know it sounds like to me is that you're like a fair-weather friend fan of the final fantasy series like you're no you're all bluster you're like oh yeah i'm a huge fan but when when push time comes to su- shove no somebody's somebody's not there playing final I fantasy <laughs> final fantasy game so don't even try it I, somebody I somebody's out there to support square enix listen <laughs> where's your support <laughs> piece the gamer like, do you want you. do you even want to see final fantasy 7 remaster do you even want to see that don't i mean you really want to <laughs> Let me just say this. Are you really sure you're excited for Final Fantasy VII Remastered? I'm going to hop on the Chocobo and ride up there and fuck you up right now. I don't even think you have a Chocobo. I I, highly doubt that. Feather, come over here. Listen, let me just say this. Sure, you might say you're a Chocobo fan, but when push comes to shove, do you have a Chocobo? Do you really have one? Fuck both of you guys, okay? I own every fucking Final Fantasy game. I don't even hear this. Uh, let, sure. me just say, yep, let me yep. just say this, all right? Some Final Fantasy games are better than others. Uh, Final Fantasy 15, I don't know what to expect yet. It's a completely new story. Uh, I think I'm going to really enjoy it. Uh, Final Fantasy 13 didn't like Final Fantasy 12. I love Final Fantasy 10, 10, 2. Didn't like that much. 10 was amazing. Final Fantasy is subjective to whichever Final Fantasy it is. Of course, I'm going to get it. I'm going to play it. I'm going to enjoy it. Now, there's another company that's made games that I've Let's just put it this way. E- Team Eco made Eco and Shadow of the Colossus. Shadow of the Colossus to me is a game that's very few words, but means almost as much to me as Final Fantasy VII. So I really want to play the next Team Eco game before I get into the next Final Fantasy game because the, the Eco games, to me, they are more connected than the Final Fantasy Does Final Fantasy, Fantasy, Fantasy VII really mean that much to you? Are you, you really sure about that? <laughs> I'm going to have it. I'll probably have it within the next week or two. Are you really going to have it within the next week or two? God damn it, Robbie. <laughs> yes. This is too much there's fun. So, there's so many games that I have to play right now. This is insane. Right now, Robbie and I are very lucky there's not a choke button on Skype. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or like an eject your speed or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the I'm looking forward to playing it. it, guys. I definitely am. Uh, if I wasn't really, honestly, if I wasn't as, having as, as much fun as I'm having in like Dishonored 2 right now, and I did promise you guys I'd get Titanfall 2, so I got that. And, you know, I got Sky, Skyrim because it's something I've always loved, and I thought Skyrim was amazing. And, of course, now Final Fantasy 15 is here. And then the day after tomorrow, we're going to have the, the Last Guardian. It's just not enough fucking time. <laughs> It's not, it's not enough time. It's something I'm going to definitely get into. It's not one of those games that I'm going to wait on. I'll, I'll have it probably with you the You make next time two. for what's important to you. Absolutely. And you that's, make time for Final Fantasy if you're a true fan. Are you a true fan, Beast of Gamer? <laughs> I'm sorry, Beast. I totally derailed this whole podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's you okay. To talk about some new stuff. Why don't you go ahead? <laughs> Hold on, I got something to put in real quick. Uh, Beastly, you got a question in the chat from Mr. Goodbites. He says, "Is it possible that the lack of turn-based fighting is what's turning you off from like Final Fantasy 15? Could it be that, or it's not really a turn-off? I think that the the, the uh, real-time uh, action is just as exciting in its own way. It's just the evolution of what the turn base was. I just." It's a whole new story. It's a whole new character, you know, characters, people I've got to learn to love. So before I get into it and I start loving these new characters, uh, Noxus and all these other people, I'm going to just wait for a second because Final Fantasy throughout the history of my life has had a way of kind of pulling me away from reality, pulling me away from the other things in my life that really matter to the point where I'm just stuck in the game. And, you know, I got people yelling at me, you know, to do things and I don't want to go to work and all these kind of things. So I'm just... 
I'm just going to wait. It's nothing wrong with Final Fantasy 15. I think it's going to be a really amazing game. That with that said, I just I'm I'm just being a little bit of patient. I'm just being patient. Don't listen to Briar or Robbie. They're they're haters. They drank a whole fucking Gator uh, Haterade before the show. Hate no It's empty, man. It's, it's empty. Yeah, you got that right. <laughs> did I hear something about Haterade? Uh-huh. Y- yes, you did. All right, Beasley, tell me what what we saw at PSX because I know there was one thing that had to make you nearly shit a fucking golden brick or well, cry joyful tears. I did cry. Or both. I really did. I did. And my daughter was in my lap, and I was squeezing her, and I she was almost dead at the end of the trailer. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, no. The long trailer. Did you film your reaction, by the way? I yes, hope I you did. did. Oh yes, I can't wait for that. Oh my god, that's gonna be so good. So the the PSX started with something that really blew my mind because it was one of the every now and then you see a game that looks so good, you're like, what the hell is this? It looks so good. Whoever the developer is, ama- is amazing. And then you start to notice parallels between this game and another game that you've seen. This is exactly what happened at PSX's first trailer reveal. It showed this woman dressed in Muslim garb uh, running through a Muslim territory, basically sneaking in to do something. And the game ended up being Uncharted 4, The Lost, the Lost Legacy. I don't yeah. know what this is. Is it a prequel to Uncharted 4, a sequel to Uncharted 4, who knows, but they do have apparently characters from other Uncharted games in this. Yeah, and it was the girl from Uncharted 3 and the other girl from Uncharted 4. Uncharted 4, yeah. Yeah. So they're they're bringing other characters into the fold, and it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. And basically anyone who's played Uncharted 4 is going to buy this game because it looks amazing. And of course we know what Neil Druckmann, Bruce Straley, and the team at Naughty Dog are capable of. Uh, The thing that I kept thinking about and it kept coming to the back of my mind is we don't know you know the people out here watching the pundits who talk about video games we don't know exactly what these these developers are capable of we don't know what they're working on uh neil Druckmann said in a in a interview after the psx event that they wanted so badly to reveal uh the last of us part two earlier than they did oh yeah uh, because i watched it's been a it's been on his mind for a long time, and I was thinking, wow, they're doing that, but they're also doing more DLC for Uncharted 4. Very, very talented, and PSX began. Now, I got a list of a lot of the stuff that they shown. Me too. Yeah, uh, I have it written down. Would you like to go through some of that list, and then maybe uh, at the end of it, we'll talk about the end, which was the uh, cap on top of the, yeah. the nightcap, uh, uh, so to speak, of uh, The Last of Us Part 2. We'll talk about that at the end, because that was the big earth-shattering moment but robbie you can pick uh some of the news from psx some of the stuff you thought was exciting we can go through and talk about yeah absolutely i just want to quickly go over the uh the uncharted the lost legacy and say when that was playing like when uh chloe was walking through the streets all in her robes and stuff i didn't was like is this uncharted i couldn't figure it out i didn't know if it was gonna be i figured it could be an uncharted it could have been tomb raider i had no idea what it was gonna be i thought it might be shadow of the tomb raider yeah yeah now, I don't know if you guys know this, but you guys know I have a, a Sony Xperia Z3 phone. Mm-hmm. You guys remember I got the PlayStation phone. We don't, and are, are they paying for this advertisement? Damn it, Briar. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't my day. But there was a portion of this trailer, and I, I recorded my reaction throughout the whole PSX. When uh, she pulled out her phone, I said, that's my phone. And I said, this is Uncharted. <laughs> everybody, everybody in my family looked at me like, what the hell are you talking that's about? That's hilarious. That's where you cut it off. It's like, that's my phone. It's got to be Uncharted. That's because they used that, that same phone throughout Uncharted 4 multiple times. <laughs> so it, it looked like it was on the same graphical parody oh, as Uncharted. Man. Very few developers are able to squeeze that type of power out of the PS4. So I was like, this looks like it could be an Uncharted game. I saw the phone. It has to be an Uncharted game. And I was right. But continue, Rob a Skull. Uh, yeah, so the next thing they pretty much announced was Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, which I'm not usually into fighting games, but that was cool, seeing Mega Man and Iron Man and stuff. Yeah, that and trailer was really good, too. Like you could, That was cool. You couldn't help but get hyped up for that. Just the way they introduced like, Mega Man, everybody goes crazy, and then they introduced Ryu, and then the bad guys, or, or who was it? It was uh, Captain Marvel. Yeah, Captain and Marvel came Iron in, Man. she's badass, because her movie's and coming, Iron too. Man. Iron Man, that's yeah. right. That, that was now, cool, man. It was a cool trailer. Very and you know cool. the fighting community has like major love for that insane. that series. Insane. I know and they, Justin Wong. They also announced that Marvel vs. Capcom three was coming to PlayStation as well. Yeah, and that's out, edition. I think, right? Yep, it is. 
I I never got as much into Marvel vs. Capcom 3 as I did Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I was actually really good on a competitive level with Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I'm looking forward to seeing just how much they change with Marvel vs. Capcom 4 and if they're able to kind of bridge that gap for the old school Marvel vs. Capcom 2 players to kind of get back in on the ground level and get get their game up the way that we used to years ago in the arcade. But I can't wait to see what they're going to do with this. For me, this is kind of a door opening moment, kind of similar to what they're doing with Kingdom Hearts. A lot of people don't understand that Kingdom Hearts is going to have a lot more stuff than we've ever seen before, like the Guardians of the Galaxy. They're going to have you know the, the guys from the X-Men and Star Wars and Kingdom Hearts now. And all these options are available in this game as well, too, now. So we could see Guardians of the Galaxy characters fighting in Marvel's Capcom 4. We could see some of these guys from the Avengers fighting in uh, Marvel's Capcom 4. We could see, you know, Ooh. anything. So it's really going to be exciting to see exactly what these developers are able to pull, what what strings they're going to be able to pull to make this game more and more exciting. Because I, call I remember Groot. The story. Groot. Yeah, I you am can, Groot. You can, you can, you can have no, Groot. I am Groot. I'm Groot. I am Groot. Groot. I that guy's Groot. vocabulary was just amazing. I, I all the things Groot. he said. It's really I something. am Groot. All right, what's the next game? Uh, <laughs> okay. What's the next game, Robbie? He caught you off guard. Look yeah, no, I got it. Uh, on my list, one of the next games was, well, this isn't in any particular order. It's mostly ordered, but the Wipeout Collection, which I was a little Ooh. disappointed because I thought that was going to be a new one. I was like, oh, yeah, shit. another remastered. What's the next game? <laughs> yeah. Well, well, God damn it, Brian. Wipeout's the one. We're not going to do that. Okay, because I was playing my original PS1 demo disc, and I played Wipeout on there, and I was like, wow, this really takes me back. Oh, Briar, come back. Come back, Briar. Briar. <laughs> okay, Destiny, here. it was a sparrow. I thought it was Wipeout, <laughs> but it was actually a sparrow, and he's back. <laughs> yeah, but for me, this gives a whole new audience of gamers a chance to see what was great about it when we were young and see what they actually add to the game. Wipeout was really fun, and it carved out its own niche in this in the, yeah. in the racing genre. So I'm looking forward to see. Look, I'll just say this. Sony PlayStation Experience, they paid huge homage to the old games, bro. They paid yeah, homage. To I'm glad they're, they're doing a Wipeout remastered. You know, new players will get a chance to play it. it it's been a long time, but it's a remaster. Yeah, I'm. Wish it was a new <laughs> Let's game. move on to the new stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Robert. All right. So the next thing was the uh, Destiny holiday update, known as the Dawning. Obviously, this is Christmas theme. Sparrow yeah. Racing League is back. New quests. That's a, all a kinds lot of, cool of stuff, stuff. Briar. That, that yeah, there's a lot of stuff. A lot, unexpected too, because you know we were expecting Sparrow Racing League, but we're getting uh, revamped three revamp strikes. We're getting a new strike scoring system so that you can you know compete you know on score in the strikes. That's uh, cool. We're getting all sorts of stuff in this thing. I'm sure there'll be a ton of microtransactions. So, you know, if you have any leftover Christmas money, you can spend it there. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I'll, I'll have plenty to say about that on my YouTube channel. It's so funny. He said Christmas money, but when you're the parent, that means something completely different than when you're the kid. <laughs> leftover Christmas money for me is going toward bills. But yeah, it's going to be exciting for Destiny players. And, and I really have to get that last DLC. I still haven't picked that up, Briar. Oh, really? I'm so yeah, I'm so fucking late and so old and pathetic. I shouldn't even be allowed to be on the show. It's hard, man. There's a lot of games out. A lot yeah. of games. It's it's really tough. You gotta right, get around next? to that Far Cry Four, man. Robin? Yeah, Briar. Get on Far Cry Four. What's wrong with you? <laughs> he said no. I, I like the cellophane <laughs> look. It looks totally fine. I think if I open it up, it's gonna lose some of its value. Yeah. It's like a comic book. What do we got next, Robbie? <laughs> All right, so one of the next things which, oh, this hit me right in the my childhood was the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. I legit started tearing up as soon as they showed this because I, I played these games. I was, I was so like, mad that they're so. not making a new Crash Bandicoot. No, I think this, this is, is the testing plan. the waters for this a new one. This is the plan. What, yeah, what, they've said, what they've said is if they have enough of a critical reception of the Crash remakes, then we'll get a new crash. Now I was I never promise, big guys. If you buy enough of this shitty old product, we will definitely make a new awesome player. They're doing it. Hold on, it's another up. fucking remaster. Be, this is way different, though. This is like from the ground up, though. This game is going to play different. Well, it does look like it plays different, but I love Briar's sales technique. He just sold the hell out of this game. Jeez, Briar. <laughs> they should have had him on stage. Look, guys. I promise. I promise. If you we'll support make a new us by buying this remaster, we'll definitely make a new Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> look at his eyes. <laughs> look at his eyes. This is great. I promise. He's got that cheap salesman look to him. You can sell it. <laughs> oh, man, this is the key great. is to just remain silent now. Yeah, just the first person to talk loses. Mm-hmm. 
I don't know. I, I understand. People love All Crash Star. Bandicoot. That's fine. But it's a remaster. Well, it's, it's really older people, and it's more of a nostalgia effect than anything. The game, had some, the game had some real issues with the way that it played, and that's just being totally honest. Uh, you know, it was one of the first of its kind on PlayStation, and people at that time were really keen to get something new and presumably exciting. They they must have overhauled it. I hope that they do overhaul it. My wife was fucking going crazy when she was watching the trailers and seeing how it looked old to new and how you know her eyes were lighting up and her stomach was getting bigger and bigger with the baby every time they showed more in the trailer. I was like, wow, this is really exciting her. Hopefully the game doesn't baby play the way out. it used to. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wants to play yeah. some of that crash. Alright. Tell me about something new, god damn it. <laughs> Come on, Robbie. Right, shit. Damn it. All right, uh, I actually forgot to put this on the list, but I'm just remembering it now. Ace Combat 7 for VR. That's going to be cool, man. Yeah, have that's pretty cool. Game? I was yeah. not excited about Ace Combat whatsoever until I heard it's going to have VR. They were like, ah, I'll take that's a look exciting. at that. That's yeah, exciting. Yeah. And, and just as a side note for the people who don't know, Ace Combat originally started off as Air Combat. But continue, Robbie. All right. <clears throat> this... Oh, man, this is the heavy hitter right here, man. This has to be one of the most anticipated games of our generation. Of course, I am talking about, wait for it, Knack 2. Oh, oh baby. Mark, Holy sorry. damn, it's happening. Let oh. me just say this, okay? Because I've made some predictions. Why I'm is this on the list? This. Let's get to something fun and exciting. <laughs> I this is the most boring fucking announced. list of new games. I was so excited watching the PlayStation experience happen. I'm like, holy shit, this game looks awesome. Oh, man, this game looks awesome. This game looks... Oh! And now I'm listening to you to tell me the list of the games. I'm like, that's a remastered. That's a remastered. That game sounds like it's... What the fuck is going on here, Robbie? What have you done to the PlayStation experience? I'm just giving you the list. I find these that's exciting. So they're going to hell. <laughs> let, let me just say this, okay? Let me just say this because Briar got me trying now, okay? Knack 2 is going to be good. For people who are doubting out there, Mark Cerny, he thought the Knack 1 was going to be amazing. He created that game. Something? He I heard all that fun. negative criticism and he said, you know what? I want to take this game, turn it into something great. And it does look fun. I got to say, they have balls announcing this here. And I got to tell you guys, I like Knack 1. I laughed out loud when this was announced. I did. <laughs> like, I couldn't believe they announced it. All right, it so there. let's stop with the April Fool stuff. <laughs> Because Briar wants to really be excited. Let's talk about some really exciting news. The shit that really made you shit your pants. The stuff that made your mom run to the living room and ask you, yes. did you wipe yourself? Give it to we me. We need some exciting stuff, Robbie. Give yes. it to us. Resident Evil 7 trailer. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah. That's all I have to say. That does that. look good. I, I haven't played the demo. They have the <laughs> VR demo up on the PlayStation Network now. You can download, download that it now. It's like five VR. Nice. I hear yeah. it's basically going to give... Mm, around 94% of the population a heart attack. <laughs> I think great, that's accurate. Brother. Don't play this game. <laughs> so I'm hoping yeah. I'm going to dodge that, that bullet. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, it looks great. Like, the game looks great. And I'm not even, like, a huge Resident Evil, Evil fan. Like, you got... Beasley, you're a huge fan. You must be, like, I ecstatic. I, I downloaded it and played it as soon as it installed. It's, like, five gigs to install. Uh, basically, what it is is the original demo with the added uh, portion of that demo that became available later that I still I never played until last night. When you're playing it in VR, certain games you actually move around in with the controller, you can get kind of vertigo and feel uneasy. This like like um, what's the one that you played initially, Brian? The horror game. I can't game? remember the name of you it. You know what I'm talking about, though. The one that's um, on the demo disc. Yeah. Here yeah. they lie. Here they lie. Oh, no, that's not on the demo disc. Yeah, that, that game made me nauseous almost immediately. This yeah. controls like that, but it does not have any of that effect. You're actually controlling like you do in a traditional first-person game, mm -hmm. but when you turn, the, the camera actually jumps a few frames to make it easier for you to turn around. I felt like okay. I was really in the house. You play through the entire demo. You're talking to the guys. I felt like the one black guy who's about to get murdered because I was black around these two white guys who didn't give a flying fuck about everything that was happening around them. And I was like, we should be getting, I was talking to him like I was really there. And my wife was laughing out loud. I said, we should be going outside. You just saw that shit happen over there. What the <laughs> fuck are you doing? But they yeah. weren't listening to me, though, so I know what yeah. it felt like in real life. But 
Playing it in VR, I didn't know exactly how Capcom was going to implement it. Now that I've actually seen it and played it, the way that they're actually going to do it is going to be a full-fledged, real game that you control in 3D space the same way you would with a traditional controller. I don't know how the guns and stuff work because I didn't find them, but all this stuff, you know, I was finding bullets. I just didn't find the gun. Mm -hmm. It feels really, really good. It feels very transformative like you're there. The atmosphere was just as real as it was in the kitchen demo, um, and it just... I'm telling you now, that's going to be the number one VR game of at least. I'm really looking when it comes forward out, to it. I don't even like, well, I don't like horror games at all. I used to be a fan of Resident Evil like a long time ago, but what they've done like with five and six, it really didn't interest <laughs> me at all. But I'm actually looking forward to this game because it just looks good. It just looks oh. good, and it's VR. So like having a great VR experience is really important to me right now. Like I can't wait for that. If yeah, there's I not enough. Wondered, is there any movie out there where it's like six white people and a black person go into a horror like situation and the black person is the one who walks out and all the all white people die? There's only one. Which one is it? It's called Night of the Demons. Okay. 19, 1989 and the black guy's name is Roger. And yet yeah, stuck with me because I was like, this is the only one that's fucking realistic. <laughs> yeah. The only one that makes at the, sense. At the, at the end of the film, it was Roger and a young lady who was dressed in like a wedding gown. It was a Halloween party at this house where this, uh -huh. this demon basically took over all these young teenagers who were fucking all over the place. And they uh, they uh, possessed this girl named Angela and basically throughout the house started killing everybody and everybody became uh, possessed. At the end, yeah. it was Roger who was dressed as a pirate. And I'm trying to remember the other the girl's name. It was a little pretty white girl who was dressed like in a, a wedding gown. And they were outside. They were actually getting ready to leave the, this mansion that was enclosed. And there was this big giant fence. And then he saw these fucking creatures coming outside of the front of the house. And the girl fell down in true form. She tripped and fell and looked at the demons walking towards her. And Roger turned around and grabbed the barbed wire fence. And he fucking powered his way over that shit. Good he was Roger. screaming his ass off. He started you know, screaming as yeah. he was grabbing the barbed wire. And, and this is one of those, dodge. This is one of those moments for black history. Because it should be taught. <laughs> black It should choice. be taught. Yes. Uh, he was climbing over and you guys it's called Night of the Demons, not the remake that came out years later, but Roger got the fuck out of there and it stuck with me. And that was twenty years ago when I was watching it. And the fact yeah. that I remember his name lets you know that that shit fucking stuck with me. It's it's like it's ridiculous how you know everybody makes fun of the fact that in every Fucking horror, horror movie. Black like, six true. white people walk in and one black person. The black person is there, so I, I don't know even why the black person is there, because they immediately fucking kill him. That's what I said <laughs> when I was playing Resident <laughs> Evil, okay? And, and the, the thing is, now I'm starting to understand how white people trick black people into dying. It could be a uh -huh. banana peel. It could be anything. I'm walking into Resident Evil demo. Basically, I feel like I'm walking around with these two white gentlemen. And one starts talking to me, and I played the demo before on regular TV, so I should have known the other guy was going off somewhere to get killed. But this gentleman turned around and started talking to me about other shit. I'm, t I'm actually having a conversation with him, and he's got me looking in drawers and stuff. And by the time I realized what happened, I was like, this fucking guy, just, he's going to get me killed. He's talking <laughs> about shit that doesn't even matter, and I'm supposed yeah. to know. You'd be so climbing out a window like a fucking smart person. I should. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to upload that video. For the first two minutes I stood outside, I was looking at them from outside. I said, I don't want to come in there with you fucking guys. But they were looking at me, then they went around the corner. I said, well, now strength in numbers. Now I gotta fucking follow you. So, <laughs> you, you know, know they're gonna go in there and split up anyway, so what the fuck's the matter? Strength the numbers, <laughs> your exactly. ass out the fucking back this door. exactly <laughs> what happened. Frustrating as hell. No kidding, now, man. One thing that they did quite a bit of at PSX yesterday that was really pleasing to me, and something that's becoming more prevalent with more awards and shows, is that they did a lot of releases right now. It, yeah, some of them, I love that. Were, I like that. Some of them were demos. Some of them were going to be available later on in the night. And one of the games that they actually gave away for free, uh, they, they showed done. a demo. They showed a demo, and I was like, wow, this looks like it could be interesting. I'm watching it as it happens. A game called Let It Die was available for free for PlayStation 4 users. That's a full free? Game. Yes. Yep. Only wow. free. And so I downloaded it last night, um, and it looks like it's going to be interesting. I'll probably be doing some gameplay of it probably tomorrow after I get home from work. But they did quite a bit of that. And to me as a gamer, that's stuff that's really exciting to me. They also showed uh, – um, I'm trying to remember the name of the company. But the game is called Near Aut Automata, and it's by – Oh, Platinum Games. starts with a P. Okay, Platinum Games, the creators of Bayonetta 2. It looks like it could be a fun RPG experience. 
I'm looking through my my uh, list. So we're just going through BC's list because mine sucks or something. What? Absolutely. I'm all remasters. I'm, right I'm trying to keep people awake, Brian. I mean, Robbie. Good jerk. Now, uh, another thing that they showed uh, at PSX right. this year. I'm not uh, the biggest sports sim fan, but this actually looked really good. Uh, MLB the Show 17. Uh, retro and, mode. Well, not just that. King Griffey, The whole the entire game looks so so good, and you the retro the mode. Yeah. And at the very end of this uh, trailer, they showed this retro mode, which harkens back to old school SNES arcade style baseball yeah. games. And that's something that a lot of people are really going to enjoy. Are you guys? Have you guys ever uh, gotten into the MLB games? I actually sent yeah, my I bought, I bought a few of them, and I played through like full seasons of them. I haven't bought any for the PlayStation Four, but I had uh, multiples of them for the PlayStation Three. I really like those. The, those games play really well if you like baseball. Yeah, I've never I actually played bought an MLB game, but I've heard very good things. So, uh, yeah, I actually bought that game and sent it to my brother-in-law in Ohio. He's a huge uh, MLB fan. Him, him, and his son Chris. What up, Todd? One. Uh, okay, so another thing that they it's showed Joe, though. Fuck that Joe. really. Uh, <laughs> God damn it, Joe! Yeah, Joe's always shit fucking up. <laughs> Joe, get your shit together, man. Well, you know what, Joe. Did you even fucking watch PSX? <laughs> Probably not. Probably doing laundry. I think he did. I think he gave his fucking Probably notes over to Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Joe. <laughs> God damn it, Joe. Now, another thing they showed that I'm actually really excited about, because I am an old school RPG ga- fan, and I'm a huge fan of Studio so you say. Ghibli. I- <laughs> yeah, are you really excited, though? Yeah, you Are bastards. You sure? <laughs> a beautiful new trailer for Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdoms debuted at PSX. Now, I'm a huge fan of Studio Ghibli. Studio really? Ghibli. Yes. Yeah, I believe it's pronounced Ghibli. Uh, Ghibli. Uh, Ghibli. I don't know. I've always called it. I've always called it Ghibli, and some people say Ghibli. All I know is they made Spirited Away. They mm-hmm. made Kiki's Delivery Service. They made uh, Princess Mononoke. So, bar none, some of the best animes of all time. These are full movies what? that are fully Kiki's Delivery Service. It's a real movie. Mm-hmm. Hey man, I don't know if they show you guys in Canada. Maybe they only show the the two twins from South Park up there. But down here, we see real <laughs> shit. Good anime, okay? <laughs> Jesus, that was, that was pretty good. Savage right. This show has never been so savage. This, this like, shit is just so savage, right. man. Like, I mean, when you start talking about armor fucking out fucking up in here, like, episode one thirty-five, <laughs> the most savage one we've ever blown. bullets. <laughs> I gotta put on some armor to protect myself from all the savagery I'm getting right now. As a Canadian, right. I feel very threatened. Yeah, I'm gonna be Listen, dodging bullets. If if you had to grow up with Joe, you get pissed off every time you hear his name too. Oh, all right. <laughs> Fucking joke. <laughs> Fucking joke. <laughs> now, are you guys excited at all about uh, Nino Kuni? Did you guys get a chance to play it? I have it on PS3. I didn't get a chance to finish it because I'm a loser. And I, I admit that openly. But the game is really amazing. The narration is really good. It's a great narrative-based RPG. Uh, it's a beautiful game. It looks like it's hand-drawn by the this team at Ghibli. 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 Um, Ghibli. And this... <laughs> it's Giblets. <laughs> but it looks it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Is this something you guys might possibly be interested in if you get the time to play? I'd definitely no. try it. <laughs> Straight up, no. Thug life. We need to put the cigar and the, and, and, and the sunglasses on Briar right now. <laughs> I think that it, uh, you know what? I know there's a lot of hardcore Studio Ghibli fans who are doing nothing but salivating over the prospect of playing this game. And I'm a huge fan of this of the uh, studio myself. I'll definitely be picking that game up. I love it as much as Final Fantasy. All right, so another game that was revealed that I'm not really that super excited about, but a lot of people are. And obviously, uh, this game series has done well over time because they're like on the 25th installation is the Yakuza series. Yakuza Kiwami uh, is the remake of the PlayStation 2 classic. And it's coming to PS4. And there's another one coming out in 2018, but I'm trying to remember the name. Many Yakuza, so I've never even played it. I mean, it's like Yakuza. Japanese Grand Theft Auto, I guess, which would be cool, but I don't know. Just never played it. Yeah, I've never played one either. Oh, right. okay, wow. But there's so fucking played. many. Maybe I should. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, well, I think you should I mean, really start at the beginning now. You know what? Play them all, Robbie. Start at the beginning, play each one of them, and we 25? expect a full review next week. 
<laughs> that's, actually, that's not very reasonable. Can you imagine how Robbie would look if he actually tried to do it? Next week, he looked dead body sitting there, eyes. I probably have to quit my job to do that, shot. so I'm I'm not doing that. <laughs> All right, uh, they did show, before we get to the, the ending uh, news for PSX, they did show new footage from Horizon Zero Dawn. What did you guys think oh, about that? God this damn, game I, is so exciting. Game looks so God. good. Fucking hell, I'm so excited for that game. I really am. I feel like at this point, I'm sold on it. Like, I don't need to see yeah. anything, but... I don't think still, anybody's I'm not trailer, so I'm like, good. yes. Oh, I, it looks so good. You know, I, to me, the whole idea of what this game represents and, and the possibility of what it's going to be. The game looks like it runs like a dream. Now, if they're able to uh, convey a story and characters in a likable environment the same way they have, you know, as well as the yeah. mechanics of going out into the world and taking these gargantuan uh, mechanical beasts down, I swear it's going to be game of the year. It looks yeah. really, really It good. looks fantastic. They're using that engine. They gave that engine to Hideo Kojima for his new Death game. Death Stranded. Death Stranded. Yeah. Death Stranded. We did yeah, we did mention Death Stranding and, um, and Wakanami. <laughs> but, I mean, it looks fantastic. I'm worried. You know, I like, I want to make sure there's a story there that, you know, engages me and keeps me wanting to play. I want to know, how big is this world? Is this an open world? Is this, uh, you know, a series of levels that just look like an open world, kind of Uncharted 4 style? Like, what exactly am I looking at here? And also, how does it play? Like, because frankly, that was the thing about Killzone games for me is they look fantastic, but mm -hmm. once I actually got them in my hands, I was always disappointed. Uh, so you know, I, I'm I'm excited for it, uh, but you know, like I'm not going to go crazy. Well, that, that's that's a very responsible and respectable way to approach a new series, a new franchise. Uh, and the thing is, they're talking about this. Shuya Yoshida said, this is going to be our next big thing. So they, they are obviously putting a lot of weight and a lot of promotion behind it. I hope they're really successful. Another game that they showed uh, that we didn't mention, and I want just pretty much you guys' input on it, and you guys let us know in the comments too, was Neo, uh, yes. which, is, which is a game being made by, I believe, Tecmo. Oh, is it Tecmo? Cool. Uh, which is kind of a samurai uh, Oh, yeah. That game looked cool as hell. It's, it's a samurai. It's, it's, oh, is it Team Ninja? I I, so. It's one, one or the other, but it's kind of a samurai old mythology take on games like Bloodborne or Dark Souls or yeah. Demon it's Souls. Animation meets Dark Souls is whatever. Ani over and over that's again. a perfect perfect way to, to describe yeah. it. I actually downloaded the demo of this game a year ago. Really, a year ago, and like I told Kate, I said the demo is probably nothing like what we're seeing now because I played the demo. It didn't look like what we saw yesterday. Uh, so I actually have an old piece of PlayStation history. You got, and I don't know if you can still download the original Neo, but it is very, very similar to uh, Bloodborne, uh, similar to Dark Souls and Demon Souls, in which the enemy types are extremely difficult to manage. But once you master it, it's very rewarding. It's parrying. It's uh, you know jumping out of the way and dodging attacks and coming in with you know excruciating blows to take out your foes. But it looks like it's going to be really good, and that's yeah, something graphically we graphically it looked really. In impressive and you know having that type of gameplay in like a that japanese setting was very interesting to me as well because what they could do with like kind of like those japanese monsters and you know like they're kind of you know it's just a fresh look instead of just seeing that same eastern european look over and over again yeah i mean honestly the last time you saw anything like that was onimusha uh, and that was playstation 2 so it's it's really refreshing to see you know someone kind of digging back into something that was successful years ago and trying to give it a whole new uh, a fresh take and of course marrying it with something as successful as the Soul series or Bloodborne to me as as a recipe for success. The last game I wanted to mention before we actually get to The Last of Us Part Two, and I don't know if you guys have ever, ever played this because I know at some point you both have owned Vitas. Prior you do now, Robbie, you sold yours. Um, Gravity Rush Two. I saw this game. Wow. Yep. And I, I looked at it and I said, this looks like something that might be interesting. It looks looks like it could be a very, very fun game. I did beat the original on PlayStation Vita. It left a lot to be desired as far as the mechanics. The game was remastered and re-released on PS4, I believe, uh, last year. And Gravity Rush 2, uh, this new, I think it's just DLC, looks extremely fun. Is that something Wait, you guys... It's not DLC, it's, it's a new game, isn't it? Uh, I'm I think thinking... it was DLC to play as Raven. Yeah, I think that's what they said it's, it's in March. DLC. I want to say. Wow. Yeah, uh, I like the first Gravity Rush though. I played it on the Vita when it came out. I really like that game, and 
Gravity Rush 2 is coming to PS4. Am I not wrong about that? Absolutely, yeah. It is. So I'm just going to get it on there, yeah. I mean, again, like, all the Vita's games just went to PS4, so. Hey, man, they were supporting Vita last night. I was really shocked to see that. That was yeah. cool, though, with Geo Corsi you know, holding out the Vita. Yeah, that was really cool. Them that was. That. Uh, I know there are a lot of people out there stuck on Vita Island that haven't really had any solace for the last year. They haven't heard any really good or promising news about the Vita until last night. That a lot of these games that were announced will be coming to the Vita as well. So they're breathing a little. It's on. You know, Vita is on life support, but a very pretty nurse just came over and gave it mouth to mouth to give it a little bit of extra life. So that's exciting for people who are exclusively into the mobile space, handheld yeah, space. Yeah, that's the way to say it. Vita's yeah. going to get a little bit of extra life, and, and hopefully it, it moves it in the right direction. Now, the last little bit of news that we're going to talk about today from PSX 2016 was, of course, to me, the most earth-shattering news from the conference. The news that I did say that my prediction. We already talked about the new Destiny stuff. Oh, damn it, we did? <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> Even the new Icebreaker? Mm. Show's over. Yep, yep. <laughs> That's it. Nothing else was announced, of course. Obviously, there's nothing we can The Last of Us 2. Let's break, this glass, oh. break that glass ceiling right now and talk about The Last of Us 2. The funny thing about this reveal was when it first came on, Nova was sitting in my lap, and I, I looked at her in lap and said, what if it was The Last of Us 2? And then she said, it is The Last of Us 2. And as the, the trailer con you know continued on, and they showed the stop sign with the, the fireflies. Sitting That's there. when I freaked out, man. I knew immediately. And I said, it is The Last of Us 2. Oh. And then I... And I, I held on to my butt because I remember the feeling that we had initially when Final Fantasy VII was just the remaster of the original Final Fantasy VII for PS4, and yeah. I almost you know shattered my television. So I waited. I was like, they, are they waiting two years, three years, just to make another DLC? I know that my good friend Briar Rabbit told me that there's no way they're going to release anything like this, especially <laughs> since Uncharted 4 just came out. There's no fucking way because they're still yeah. working on DLC. There's no way it's going to happen. Be say, yeah, you fucking mind. So all that was playing in my mind, and I was like, well, it can't be because Briar. He no, Briar couldn't be wrong. And then, <laughs> you think they're gonna? You think that game's coming out in 2017? No, no yeah, chance. No, no. <laughs> no, 2019. Doubt even 2018. 2018. Yeah, 2019, 2019 is very likely. I think is a very reasonable uh, expectation for this game. Well, the thing is, right? I was talking to my sons about it. And my sons are very one-dimensional gamers. They play Call of Duty all day long, and uh, to them, this yeah, game is like the Call of Duty is the only game. And I was talking to him. I picked him up Friday, and I said, well, what about games like The Last of Us or RPG games? What are the differences? And my son, you know, spoken like a 14-year-old, said, it takes talent to uh, make Call of Duty. And I said, wow. I am going to talk <laughs> to your mother and see if I... Uh -uh. I said, well, see it? if I can get We're my name. We're going to have to have a talk, son. A big, big he, talk. He, he, said, he, said, he said it takes a lot of talent and skill to make a Call of Duty game because of all the mechanics that go into it. Then I had to break down to him exactly what goes into a story-based game and how you got to craft this story, meaningful story, likable characters, a beautiful world. Briar. And then on top of that, we you got to create gameplay mechanics. Is he asleep? I can't see him. I'm still looking at the beautiful oh, news. Kind of like uh, Phil under the Last of Us 2. Last of Us 2, though. How did you feel about... Um, Seeing uh, Joel and Ellie again, like it, it was pretty well, dramatic the way it opens up, you know. Well, I, I I uploaded a video earlier today about this. I don't want to uh, watch your video. I want to hear you say it. <laughs> how did you feel about you, seeing Joel and you, Ellie? Do you want to see me cry too? All right, so this is how I felt. <laughs> When I first saw Ellie, I didn't know what was going on because it showed her hand bleeding. I thought it was a guy who just beat someone's ass. When I saw her eyebrow, I knew it was her. I felt that emotional resonance. She was older, very similar to the feeling I got when I saw Clementine as an older girl in uh, The Walking Dead. Now, I saw this, this complete, utter destruction that happened around her as she started to play her guitar. Which, right, she of had course, just killed a fucking mess a of shit people. ton of people. Killed yeah. a girl by the bathtub. And then I see Joel outside approaching... Very calmly, very right. peacefully. Like, this is uh, no walking. big deal for Joel. Like, he walks in on Ellie fucking murdering all the time. Well, this is the thing, right? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if you guys, uh, you know, watch the interview with Neil Druckmann and uh, Ashley Johnson and all these people afterwards, but they said this story is about her. And uh, uh, yeah. Troy Baker yep. said that, you know, Joel is the person he misses the most. When Joel walked into the room, he had his gun. He had the same jacket from the original Last of Us. Hadn't changed. His hair and his beard hadn't turned gray. He looked exactly the same as he did in the original game. And, of course, we know Ellie's 19 years old now, so this has been six years. He looked at Ellie and said, How you do? he said, what are you doing, kiddo? And she she didn't look at him for a while. And then she looked at him and said, I swear I'm going to get every last one. Every yeah. last one of them. So we saw My the trailer, too. 
But what I want to know is how do you feel about Joel and Ellie coming back for Last of Us 2? That's, how do, that's how what, do you that's, feel? Like, are you excited what, about it? Did you? I, we had a conversation after Last of Us saying, I hope they don't make a sequel to this game because we felt like that was a good place for the story to be left off. Well, I, I feel great to see them both, but I think we're being uh, cleverly misdirected right now. I don't think that they're both in this game. What? Okay. <laughs> I, I believe, this is what I was getting around to, I believe that after the events of the original game, and I might be crazy, Let's just mark down this 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 episode. Let's I believe that Joel's crazy. Okay, go. I on. believe that Joe. I believe that Joel's dead. Um, and the reason I believe that is for a few reasons. Ellie swore she's going to get every last one of them. Joel walked into the situation kind of in an oblivious state, like he really didn't understand or care oh, about. So that the, wasn't really Joel. Person. That was just her remembering Joel or like imagining yeah. he was there. Yeah. Well, he thing. he didn't look like he changed. She looked like she changed quite a bit. And Neil Druckmann stated, and I quote. The Last of Us Part Two is a story of revenge. Yep, well, it lines it's, up, it's, man. That adds up. That's a good, a, good theory. It's a, it's a story of vengeance, and uh, she looked like she had become the badass that he wanted her to become. There was a, a machete laying by her foot. She fucked these people up. Joel walked in. Usually, he's the protector, but he's outside, walking in from this ray of light. Like mm -hmm. an, an angel would, and in my mind, she looked at what her a projection of her memory of him was, and possibly, who knows, what happened at the end of, of The Last of Us too. Maybe someone raided Tommy's compound, killed them all, and she escaped. Who knows what had happened? Mm -hmm. But of yeah. course, it looks like this is an issue that they're going to have with the Fireflies after the, the the events of the first game. It possibly the Fireflies had killed Joel, and she had become this beast. But to me, looking at the two of them, it didn't seem like Joel was really there. I yeah. felt like she had. That was I've, well. We didn't really see his face, though. To be fair, you know, we kind of saw it, behind him. So it showed his beard and it showed his hair, and to me, that's enough. A few yeah, years he, adds, you know, when you're saying that he didn't look older, he he still had the kind of sick. speckled gray. Look You'd think same. after six years, it'd be a little more gray, but I mean, I don't know. Yeah. And I he had see, the same get, it's so early though. It it is. Is. But but let me just say this: the direction that they're taking this story is very. It seems to be very very hard, much harder than the original game. Uh, it seems like they're focusing now more on uh, the anger aspect of what El this is what uh, 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 Neil Druckmann said. The first game was a story of love and uh, you know connection between Ellie and Joel. This story is going to be about nothing but anger and revenge. And yep. so, to me, it seems like Ellie. Look, if you look kill at kill some she, fools. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. To me, this is. This is one of the greatest Christmas gifts I could get years in advance. I know that one of my favorite game franchises of all time is Alive and Well. I know that the character that I'm actually naming my daughter after is a big part of this story. I do know that we're going to get new and amazing uh, multi... Yeah, her name is going to be Joe... <laughs> Obviously, Joe it's Joel. Ellie, Joe Ellie, Queen King of Beastlow was in Last of Us? <laughs> King of Beastlow. King of Beastlow. And Dick so, Trickle, yeah, yeah, him too. I'm really excited about. <laughs> shut up, Robbie. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, we I'm really stupid names Dick too. Trickle. Oh, that is silly shit. <laughs> but it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. I watched it in 4K on my monitor on my laptop. Uh, I just honestly can't wait. I was really taken aback. I was kind of stuck in the moment. This is something I've wanted for years. One of my favorite modern games of all time is getting yeah. a, a true successor, and it's about these people. And like I told my wife, she said, well, Troy Baker is not going to just let them kill off his character. I said, well, he could be in the game just as much as he normally would have been as far as yeah. narrative goes, but it could be a lot of flashbacks. It could be a lot of him coming in and guiding her through these tough Troy times. Troy Baker doesn't write the script either. <laughs> yeah. No, it's Night Dog, right? Yeah. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> what are your thoughts, bro? I mean, I'm I'm down to play this game, right? I love the first one. I can't wait to play the second one. I'm unlike you. I'm not a big fan of the multiplayer. Um, so I was kind of wondering, like, like are you, you know, what are you ho what are you hoping for with the multiplayer? Like, are you like an evolution? Well, Would you like more of the same? Like, no, it it definitely needs to be an evolution. There's so much going on in the multiplayer. You know, changing five or six things could completely turn the whole game upside down and, and make it more enjoyable. Yeah. Uh, and that's what you hope for when developers have something as amazing as, you know, a following as The Last of Us. This game is years old. And yeah. and the, the multiplayer community is still just as big. And there's YouTubers growing every single day just from that game alone. So it does have a very, very solid and committed following. Uh, I think that the multiplayer aspect of this game is almost as big, in my opinion, as a single player because it's just... They do it so well. They do you know, it so the, well. 
the thing they killed with the multiplayer was feeling like you were building towards something with like that kind of side story they had going the on. Meta, you were like, the meta, yeah. Yeah, that was very, very cool. I, I, it's been a while, so obviously you might have to help me out here, but it was like you had a community that mm-hmm. you were trying to build, like this fictional community that you were trying to yeah. build. So your performance in the multiplayer would then relate to how well your fictional community was doing. Yep. And you'd kind of get well, updates on that as you're going. It was it made it feel like, like I don't matter. know about real, but it felt more like it was part of the Last of Us like world, right? It wasn't just another tacked on multiplayer. It felt better than that. It felt well, like more connected it, to the single player than most multiplayers do. It no, it, it felt more connected to you, and the, and the way that they were able to do that and convey it so well is during the multiplayer of the Last of Us for people who don't play it. You're able to log in on Facebook. So you log in on Facebook with your real Facebook account. And once you accept that, all your friends from Facebook begin to become migrated into The Last of Us. So what you have is a list of things that you need to try to complete. And once you choose one, like say, for instance, I choose I want to mark enemies. And it might tell you to mark 12 enemies within three games. As long as you mark 12 enemies, your your community is going to grow. People are going to find your base, and, and it's going to continue to grow. And it's going to actually be people from your Facebook. So you're going to see your friends and your family doing certain things in the metagame. This person might be hunting. This person might be you know finding supplies. This person might be injured. And as, as long as you continue to, to do well in the metagame, of course, these, these uh, accomplishments become harder and harder the farther you go within this 12-week period. It's 12 weeks, and after the 12-week period, basically that's your score. And if you can't keep up, you start over. But after 12 weeks, depending on how many people you have, that's really the score you're going to get. And if you screw up, all lots, lots and lots of your people can die. If you choose to kill people with bitch bombs or kill people with with, uh, with Molotov cocktails and you don't accomplish what it's you're bomb. supposed to, then a lot of your community is going to die. People get sick. So you've really got to do well. And that's what I meant by they make it feel real because every now and then you'll have a list of three people from your Facebook and you got to choose which one of them you're going to let die. And so you look and you might see a friend and two family members. Or two, Joe or on three. your Facebook? His fucking ass is, yeah. Fucking Joe. God's sake. I love you, Joe. God damn it, Joe. You know, Joe watched Joe watched our last episode. He sent me a message. You you guys are something else. So we love Did you. He watched it. He watched that it. That was funny. Yeah. <laughs> I saw Robbie, saw him. Robbie saw him on Facebook. Yeah. He said, "You chumps." That was we love you, Joe. And we only got on you for doing that laundry once. But doing laundry led you to get a PlayStation VR. God damn it! So I need to go start washing clothes now. Uh, but yeah, um, I think that The Last of Us Two is huge news. I think that this is one of those things, and, and this is why I say that Sony has no issue announcing things for a win now, but they'll make you wait. That's why I say that next year they're going to announce PS5, which, Brian, there is lots and lots of news circulating now that this is something that's on Sony's table to announce PS5 in 2017. Uh, so. Well, you said that about... Uh, 2017? That would be no, no, no. Crazy. no, no. I said, I said an announcement. Oh. Kind of like how they announced Final Fantasy VII Remake like in 2013. And we still don't have it. It was a win, and that's all that matters. And I think Sony's kind of learned that. You know, the 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 public sphere and, and social media mean a lot. And if people get the perception that you're doing something amazing, whether they get it in their hand now, it is perceived as a win. And that's why I think that next year before the Xbox One Scorpio comes out, Sony is going to announce something just crazy. And it might be 2020 before we see it, but that announcement alone is going to have people talking and give people the perception that Sony wins. And this is another way that they win at PSX. Just having Neil Druckmann and Naughty Dog announce a game like The Last of Us 2, which is, of course, a AAA huge exclusive for the PlayStation brand. Of course, you're not going to see it probably until 2019. But what? What happened? It made the PlayStation experience that much better, that much more exciting, and gave people something to hold on to. And sometimes that's all you need as a company to keep your brand successful. And I think Sony's learning that. Mm-hmm. I don't think I could have said that better myself. Brag about it. said a lot. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm excited. I think I, PSX I, I knew you game would be, man. Year. Like, Last of Us is your game. You know, like that I, is I your literally game. had tears in my eyes, Briar. Yeah. I haven't uploaded the video just yet. I'm still mulling it over. But yeah, I, I was really excited. I was squeezing my daughter. I forgot she was a living being. I thought she was like a cushion from the couch. I was just gripping her so tight. Um, but it was super, super exciting. Well, I think, hands? Oh boy, I hope she's doing okay. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it was just, it was, was one of those things, time. man. Uh, 
PSX, they got down this year. The Game Awards were a lot of fun. One thing we didn't mention, and I'd like to do it real quick before we leave today, is that uh, Keeley did, Jeff Keeley did mention and take the time at the beginning of the Game Awards to uh, shine the spotlight on the industry icon Hideo Kojima and kind of let people know exactly what this guy meant. He mentioned how Konami kind of screwed him, you know, last year and how he was hidden away in a room and he couldn't leave it. And he wanted people to understand just how, how important it was to recognize the, the work and the pedigree that this man has put into the gaming industry that's really enriched and made many of our lives better by being able to immerse ourselves in his imagination. And I thought that was very, very telling of the kind of independent, uh, uh, conference the game awards is and how it's not it's not owned by anyone it's not owned by other interests it's for the gamers and by the gamers and i thought it was really important that they that they did that and i really yeah. appreciate the way they did do it it really added yeah. credibility to uh when the shick razor came out on stage and uh, oh. the ads there's way <laughs> too the many ads man oh, there's some crazy so moments too oh I was really upset. I will say, last year's Game Awards, I thought they nailed that. That was fantastic. This was like not quite as good, but it was still good overall, I thought. I don't know. Killer, Killer Mike and them was out there rapping. They had a good time. I thought overall it was a really good one. You can't do everything right, but as far as PSXs go, this is one of my favorites. Yeah, sure. What did you guys think of the performances, too, at the Game Awards? I want to hear your opinion on that. I didn't watch them. Hey, man, if they don't have Aqua Barbie Girl, I'm not down. <laughs> I mean... This is not Honestly, an argument that can be defended against. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the performances I didn't think were good. I thought the Doom one, that was sick. The other two, I was like, this doesn't make any sense for a Game Awards show. Well, you they, know? They, they tried to. You know, they they, they uploaded it to stuff? YouTube, and it got a copyright strike. Oh, really? <laughs> really? Uh, really? Yeah, it got oh. fixed really quick, obviously, but I oh. thought that was hilarious. <laughs> Wow. Well, see, the thing is, Robbie, and it's really hard to see it. I'm not a big country guy or rock guy, but they had a little something for everybody. And and as long as you felt like you were slightly included, it might be music that you don't like. It might be an artist you might not know. But they tried to do a little something for everybody to get everybody's energy up. And I think overall it was very, very successful. Very true. You need to figure a way to get the advertising out of the show itself. Yeah, yeah you're so it's right. Too oh, heavy. man. Yeah. That fucking shit razor guy, I wanted to just rip the, the top off of him and see what he did it, then. The whole show loses credibility because of it. Yeah. And they kept going back to the Assassin's Creed thing, and like some people were like, oh, I'm so excited about this and this. I'm like, no, you aren't. Shut up. Like, Did you hear the guy Christ. talking to the young lady at the Assassin's Creed booth? He said, why are you yelling? She said, oh, I'm excited. He said, I, I, I'm not that excited, but I thought it was pretty damn cool. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. Sometimes it's so painfully obvious when people are like, oh, I'm so excited about this. I'm so excited about that. And you can tell. I'm like, no, you're not. Like, it's so scripted. It's so bad. Before <sighs> we end the show, because I know we did go a little bit longer than usual, and we had to. It was, it was a very, very important show. I want to ask you guys in the comments below how you felt about the Game Awards 2016, how you felt about the nominees. Nominees, do you think that uh, Overwatch deserved it over Uncharted 4 or Doom? Who, who would you have given Game of the Year to? Let us know here on Twitch. Let us know on YouTube. And give us your thoughts on Uncharted, I mean, The Last of Us 4. I mean, Last of Us Part 2. What? <laughs> Last of Us 4? Look, I, look what, what the fuck did I miss? <laughs> I'm so <laughs> Where have I been? Look, the Last of Us Part 2, give us you guys' thoughts on The Last of Us 2. Uh, and, and if this whole idea of possibly Joel not being alive even seems realistic, watch the trailer. Let us know what you think in the comments because I watched it and that was the feeling I had. And as someone who's a huge fan of Joel from The Last of Us, a gigantic fan of Troy Baker, that's the last thing that I want. But I gotta be real. That's just the, the vibe that I got from watching it. And I, I, I hope I'm wrong. I pray that I am because I'd like to see Joel and Ellie continue the relationship, see exactly what it's blossomed into rather than see Ellie face, you know, face this harsh reality alone without the guy who helped her and made her strong. But let us know in the comments what you thought about the Game Awards overall and especially let us know what you thought about The Last of Us Part 2 and PlayStation's Experience 2016. Yep. You okay, Brian? Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward to Last of Us 2. I hope that comes out Sooner rather than later. Like, I'm really looking forward to that game. The first one was so good. Is that yeah, going to do it for the show? Game. We done? It was a good show. We had, we it was a great show. Today. I was looking of, forward to this. A lot of information. Should we do, like, a Game of the Year award? Next year, next maybe? next week? Yeah. Our own podcast. Like yes, absolutely. Maybe. I yeah. mean, 
it's hard because you know we haven't all played all the games, right? But maybe we yeah. could do like individual picks. Yes, that's great. We talk about fight. Just we could have a death match for like we could have a death one. match. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we, we we can pick. We can pick. You guys listen in the comments was a good idea, but I'm thinking we could probably pick five finalists and pick our top of those five, and then we can duel it out to make one of those the Beastly Thoughts game of the year. Yeah, maybe we'll do a few categories too. Sweet. Figure it out. Yeah, let's think about it. I think that'd be fun. All right, guys. Thank you very much for coming today. It's good to see both of you. Thank you. You too. I love you guys. I love you guys. Thank you all so much for watching and coming to kick it with us every you Sunday. You there. You. Stop finger, in it. Stop finger in the camera, Robbie. <laughs> okay, let's end the show on that note. <laughs> Jesus. Finger in the camera. Good night, guys. All right, do you feel uncomfortable, Robbie? Has Beastly made you uncomfortable? Absolutely. Look at that grin. Look at that. that. Shitty. Look at he's turning red. That's it is a shit. He actually has the real thing. He's turning the same color as his flag. <laughs> <laughs> red and white, yeah. White skin, red face, you know. Oh god. Oh, white shirt too. <laughs> Makes sense. Yep. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Finger those cameras. Bye, everybody. Finger, finger those cameras. <laughs> Damn it, Robbie, you freak. Now I know what you're into when you're all by yourself. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god. What what good energy. What a great show, guys. <laughs>